Hello and welcome to Chicory's Maintenance Series. This week we're testing the capacity of our lithium iron phosphate battery bank. So we noticed that the capacity was decreased and the very first test we did is I removed Class T fuses from all but one of the banks. And the way our uh, battery bank is designed, there's three batteries in each bank and there's four of them stacked here. And so each of these banks of three go into a class T fuse. So by disconnecting three of the fuses and only using one, I could load test just one bank of three at a time. And that allowed me to see if there was just one bank of three or something that was going on. What I discovered was that there was some degradation in all four of the banks of three. So the next step is we actually have to test each of the 12 batteries individually. That's a little bit more of a challenge because you can see that although I have a, an assembly here where there's a seam here and a seam here where I can take out this section of the bed and get access to the batteries, what that necessitates is taking part of the water maker apart, which are these uh, four pre-filters. We have a cooling fan that cools the batteries. I have my NMEA 2000 uh, network backbone splitter here. And of course we have some tool storage and stuff. So Tracy and I are going to start to disassemble this so that we can get access at the batteries. We're going to have to disassemble this entire system which I'll show you. But one of the things too that we have is you can see these boards here. Uh, ABYC regulations say that the batteries cannot move more than one inch in any direction. And so I have these batteries in here so they can't even move a quarter of an inch in any direction. So there's lots of bracing that holds the batteries in tight, so I have to move all that stuff, all of the wiring. So it's quite a bit of a project. And then once all that's done, I need to check, hook a battery up individually and do a load test, and then I need to do that 12 times. So I'll be back in a second, but you'll see us uh, disassembling some of this stuff along the way. So I'm just giving you an incremental update. You can see that the filters have been removed. We just have them sitting at the back there. There's some panels that I removed and um, they clear this area. And I, if Tracy comes a little closer here, you can see this is where the, this panel bolts. So I have some bolts here and some bolts here. So our next step is just to remove the four bolts and then remove this section so we'll have access to the batteries. And I'll show you an update as soon as this section has been removed. Okay, so I've removed the bolts and I just wanted to show you the removal of this. I put a towel down here because if I were just to drag this across the floor, it may scratch. So I'm just lifting it up. And now I can drag it on the towel. And now you can kind of see uh, the next step. So what I'm going to do now is I have a main member holding these two batteries in and then sub members holding these two sets of batteries in. So I just have to take all the wires off, take all of those support members out, and then I can start getting access to the batteries. So I'll be back. I forgot to mention one more thing. Uh, I'm going to disconnect the entire 1200 amp hour Battleborn battery bank. That removes, I'm going to remove the three, or I'm sorry, four class T fuses. And if I were to do that without doing anything else, I would have no batteries for my lighting in the, in the, throughout the boat. So what I'm going to do, like I did um, when I worked on the Hall Effect sensor, I'm going to parallel my starting battery for both the generator and the main engine. That is going to be my house battery bank from now on when I disconnect these. So my two chargers along with the three batteries that are for my main engine and generator will feed down to this bus. The charger will feed that bus and this bus will feed my two 100 amp panels for all my DC loads on the boat. So I'm going to um, take out these class T fuses right now before I start taking the wiring off of the batteries. So uh, this middle beam is loose. I don't have it out yet because of the wiring. Um, because of access, I think the very first batteries I'm going to test are these right here. And 
I told you that I follow ABC, ABYC guidelines for battery movement, and I wanted to show you a little bit what I had. So there was one board that is recessed in here that holds the battery from going forward. If the boat were to tip over completely, I have a board that holds the battery from going up. It can't move either way because I have a board on the bottom each side. I just put this screw in here now so I can pull this board out to kind of show you. But I have this trimmed exactly to size and you can see that the battery can't even move a sixteenth of an inch. So no matter where we are in pitching seas, these batteries are bolted into place. Now that's great for regulations. However, obviously it's made it kind of difficult to get access to the batteries. Now another thing that's interesting is um, if this battery installation was lead acid or AGM or gel, this area would have to be sealed and ventilated and there's all kinds of guidelines because batteries that have um, uh, uh, acid-based chemistry can off-gas. The beautiful thing about um, lithium iron phosphate is they don't off gas. You can see that we're in our bedroom and these have access to the room and we air condition them and we ventilate them and there's no issues because this chemistry doesn't off gas. And so it's another huge advantage. So anyway, um, what I'm going to do now is slide these three um, batteries in this bank out and then I'm going to start testing these individually. I'm going to leave these three in right now until I've tested these because I don't have enough room on the boat to take all 12 batteries out and test them. So I'm going to use this as storage while I'm doing the testing process. So I'll be back in a minute. So I always want to show you how I'm doing my measurements. Um, I have the Xantrek charger off and so I'm running just off of one battery and my um, Xantrek Link Pro battery monitoring system allows me to measure voltage, uh, I can look at amperage, and amp hours. So I'm recording those every 15 minutes, and uh, this amp hours isn't actually accurate because it, it's part of the previous battery is on this, uh, which will make sense in just one second when I show you the Maritron system. But anyway, so I'm, I'm doing some redundant testing here. I'm using this Andrex Lynx Pro, and then in addition, I'm using my Maritron system, which I'm going to show you next. Two minutes and I made a new screen in Maritron. That's one of the things that's really great about Maritron. So I basically have a dedicated screen with really large displays, battery amp hours remaining, and it shows a graph. And you can do it from 12 hours or you can make it over 60 minutes or a minute or whatever. So I'm going to adjust it down to an hour once I do this. And then I have DC voltage, and you can see I have a graph there, and I have DC current with a graph here. So I can take pictures of this while I have a trend graph, plus I'll have it written down on my logbook. So I'm, once again, I'm just trying to document this process as accurately and as completely as I can. Okay, so we're ready to start the test. That means I'm going to put the Class T fuse in just for the one battery that's hooked up down here. And I'm going to shut off the batteries for the generator and the main engine. So the only thing the house will be drawing from is just this 100 amp hour battery bank. I'm going to discharge it at a low rate for five minutes just to see what the voltage does. And then once that five minutes is over, I'm going to start discharging it at 25 amps, which is 0.25 C or 25% rate of discharge. And I'm going to see how many amp hours we draw out of it until it's essentially dead and um, tracking the voltage, the current, and the amp hours will give us a very good idea of this battery's health, and then we're gonna do that 12 times. So I'm gonna do this right now, and next step I'll show you is what it looks like on the screen um, on the Maritron and what's happening. So I'm just doing an uh, intermediate update. Mm -hmm. We're working on battery BS3, which stands for bottom starboard, um, the third battery back in a row. And every time I do this, I'm just going to put a little flag here. Right now we're 77 amp hours remaining, so 33 down. You can see our voltage, you can see our current. You can see how consistent the current has been at, at about 25 and a half amps. When you see these little blips, that's us using other uh, DC current things, but you can see it's just for a second. 
our uh, voltage has been very consistent and the amp hour drawdown you can see is very consistent. One of the reasons I'm doing this update now is you can see that everything is set at 60 minute intervals. When I change this, actually I'll show you right now. Um, if I go up the next step, it jumps to four hours and the resolution drops down quite a bit. So I wanted to show you and have a recording of what this looks like before I change it to the four hour. You can see it drops down there. This is an old reading that doesn't matter anything. It's obviously when I was charging it because you can see it was at above 14 volts. Um, and so this, you can see the resolution is less, but that's the way we have to do it based on the Meritron system. So I'll be back. So I'm showing you a still picture here of when I shut the test down. You can see I'm at 11.7 volts. We're only 50 amp hours down and 50 hour amp hours remaining. So you can see that the capacity was 50% of what it should have been. And uh, you can see the consistency of the DC current and the DC voltage dropping off very, very quickly at the end. And so this was the first of six tests and I'll show you some other screen captures, but you get the idea of uh, what a dramatic reduction in capacity we actually had. So this test is pretty much over. I'm down uh, 42, I'm sorry, I have 42 amp hours remaining. I'm at 11.7 volts. This is gonna start dropping really quickly. Right now it's got a demand of 23.3 amps on it. And you can see how fast the amperage is dropping off. So I'm going to uh, disconnect this battery and start um, the next one. So I want to stop the video here and do a little bit of a recap. <clears throat> so when we originally noticed that we were losing capacity in our Battleborn battery bank, um, I contacted Battleborn and the testing that you've seen me do throughout this first part of the video was done at their request. And part of it was just to kind of see what was going on. Uh, they were both surprised and I was surprised that we had lost capacity. Uh, we had the batteries for a little over three years and um, obviously they're guaranteed for 10 years to hold 80% of their capacity and this was way below that. So once we substantiated that we had legitimately lost capacity and that it was the batteries and that we went through all this testing and the testing took me about seven days of total labor um, and I'm talking full days because of course to test all the batteries was quite a bit of work. So after that was proven to Battleborn that we lost that amount of capacity, they agreed to replace them under warranty at no cost to us as far as the batteries were concerned. So they paid to ship us 12 new batteries. We repacked everything in those boxes that the batteries came in and shipped them back at their expense. And the batteries, of course, were free as well. So no cost on our side, but of course I did have the labor to pull out the batteries and put them back in which is, I believe, fair, of course. Um, and so we now um, are going to move on to the part of the video where <clears throat> we've done that exchange and I'm putting the new batteries back in. One of the things that was a challenge about this is Tracy and I spent a lot of time at Anchor and um, finding a time that we were in a marina and could do this exchange was difficult, but it happened to be that almost for the entire month of February, 2023, we were in uh, Marina for other reasons, so we did the swap during that month. As soon as we got back in the Marina, I hauled out the batteries, took down the serial numbers and contacted Battleborn. They initiated the return merchandise agreement, shipped out the new batteries, and we started the process. And we got that all done within that month quite handily, but it was a project. So now I'm gonna show you the next part of the video where I'm putting the batteries back in. So the last video uh, part you saw was me testing the batteries and then taking them out. Battleborn has replaced my entire 1200 amp hour battery bank with brand new batteries. So for the last week while we've been waiting for those batteries, we've just been running on our starter batteries and the whole bank has been empty. And so now we're gonna start the process of loading the 12 batteries in here and wiring everything up. And I'll show you some uh, intermediate updates as we go through, but there's no reason you have to see all the tedium involved in this. So, here we go. So, 
I have the 12 batteries in place. The next thing I'm gonna do is hook up the rest of the cables and then secure them. You can see that I have them secured so they can't move up and down, but from side to side, I have these pre-cut boards that I need to slide in yet, and then I need to stop them from moving forward, and I have all those boards pre-cut and ready to go in. I just have to screw them into place. So the next time you'll see that, I will have the cables in place and the hold downs in place, and uh, we'll be getting close then. And then you might be wondering why I have such big loops in these red cables. What I wanted to make sure when I wired this is that every single battery bank of the four battery banks had the exact same length positive cable so that the resistance for each battery was exactly the same. So what I did is when I originally wired this, I measured these cables, cut them all the same height, and made sure that when I fed them up to the class T fuses, which are here, that they were the same length. And that helps me balance the resistance. Now, LifePos have very small internal resistance. So the resistance is certainly not an issue, but I thought it would just be great if I could just make every single thing perfect so the battery see the exact same voltage, exact same charge. So you can see I have everything clamped down, everything's in position. I just have a little bit of cleanup to do and I can call this project done. So thanks for hanging in. I appreciate you liking, commenting, viewing, and subscribing. Until next week, I'll see you.